Hello, Internet. This is Doofus K. Welcome to uh, DCS World, or Digital Combat... Well, it says Series in the upper left, but I think it's actually Digital Combat Simulator. Um, as you can tell on the lower right hand... Oh, actually, no, you can't tell because my face is covering it. Um, it's made by Eagle Dynamics. Um, probably one of my personal favorite uh, combat simulators. Um, flight simulators, I should say. Just because it adds um, not just like a specific plane or, you know, a specific helicopter or, you know, a specific tank or whatever. Uh, they let you do all sorts of stuff and they have all sorts of vehicles. Uh, you can see along the bottom row there, uh, those are all the different modules you can buy. It's a little expensive. Uh, combined Arms, which is the ground vehicle one, it's like 15 bucks. Um, uh, that's a little steep, I guess. Uh, but uh, the game itself, I believe, is free, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, sorry if I'm I'm not used to recording on a webcam. I'm, I'm looking at my monitor, which I usually do, obviously. So it's kind of weird to get used to the whole, you know, thinger up there. Um, so the only things that I have unlocked, as you can see, are combined arms, the SU-25, and the TF-51D. Now, the TF-51D you can't have weapons on it so you're not going to do much other than fly around and crash into stuff uh... the SU-25 uh... which is sort of the russian equivalent to the A-10 which is not totally accurate but it's close enough um, i actually really enjoy this plane and that's what i'm going to be demonstrating now i'm probably going to buy the A-10 so the A-10A is like ten dollars pretty reasonable um, but it is not fully modeled, let me do the quotes here, fully modeled. Um, the A-10C, however, is, which means that the buttons in the cockpit are clickable. Um, I would assume that the flight model is better, although I don't know that for sure. I might be just making that up. Um, but um, uh, uh, the A-10C is like 50 bucks or 40 or something. Uh, the BF-109, I think, is also $9. Um, a lot of these things are actually... I don't know if... Is it in here? Yeah, so this here, FC-3, uh, it's called Flaming Cliffs 3. You basically get all the World War II jets, and then I think you also get the F-86. It's 40 bucks for all the planes, so eh, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, they also have, like, the UH-1H. Uh, they have... Um, a Russian uh, helicopter, uh, these two. They also added, um, it's a training jet. Uh, it's like the C-101 something. God, I can't remember it now. But anyway, um, that's also in the game, but when I tried to fly it in a mission, the game crashed. So, And it's also, as you can see, not in the list here, so who knows. Um, so, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go over uh, just the basics to get a custom mission going just the bare, the bare minimums that you need to get planes in the game and people to shoot at you or, you know, your friends. So this is the mission editor. Um, I'm going to actually start a new one for this, for the purposes of this. Um, so you can see there's only one map as of now. You might be able to download more. I haven't tried. Uh, you can see that you have a red team and a blue team. Uh, the blue team, uh, well, I should say both of these are already pre-populated. Now, a pro tip here. You can see that there is Germany and some other things in here, like the U.S. So, for example, the BF-109 uh, is obviously from Germany. You cannot put that plane on the red team because you have to pick the country for the airplane. So basically what that means is that if you want to fly the BF-109, you're going to be flying on the blue team, unless you change it now. And I don't think you can change this later. Uh, so keep that in mind. For now, we're just going to leave this normal. Um, so basically you just end up with this blank map. There's these two bullseyes. I have no idea what the heck this, e this even is. I'm assuming it has something to do with um, like a victory condition. Uh, you can set up all sorts of crazy triggers and whatnot. Um, so what we're going to do here, um, this is sort of my favorite area here. You can see Sochi right here. Um, so this is a big mountain range here. Um, 
which kind of ends right near, well, it ends up, well, I guess it doesn't end. It uh, kind of peters out a little bit up here. So basically you have two, these two airports uh, are fairly close together. In fact, I think I can do this. Yeah. So if you middle click and hold, you can actually measure. So 34-ish uh, nautical miles. Yeah, good, close enough. So we're going to take this uh, as an example. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is you need a base of operations. So this airport is decently sized. Um, so if you just click on the airport, um, you know, you can click around and actually you can click, you know, you don't have to click directly on the runway. So we're going to change the coalition to red. Uh, we don't have any suppliers. We're going to, I'll get into that stuff later. Uh, this editor is not super intuitive to use, but once you get used to it, I guess like with everything else, uh, it you can actually do some pretty awesome stuff with it. All right, so we have a blue base and a red base. Now, obviously, realistically, this is pretty close. Um, some of the anti-air missiles, you know, the range is like farther than this by double almost. So you have to, you do have to be a little careful um, about what you place. You don't want to be putting SAM sites all over because as soon as somebody takes off over here, they're going to get owned. So, um, so perfect. We have a red and a blue base. Now, uh, the second thing here is, I believe this little blue thing. Yes. <laughs> blue. Well, it is now that I selected it. This, uh, the two flags here. So this allows you to set some of the uh, game options. So this check mark here, pilot can control vehicles. This means that if you are on the blue team and you're a pilot, you can actually drive via, or you can control, let me take that back. You can s give orders to your teammate AI vehicles while you're flying. Um, so in the game, F10 is the map and you can see a view so while you're flying, you can actually give orders to your your team. This is really only necessary, I believe, in single player. Um, in multiplayer, uh, I don't really know why you would do that. It'd be pretty complicated and kind of weird. Um, and then down here we have uh, other things. So Game Master. Game Master... Uh, basically gives you control over everything in the game. All the units that are controllable, I should say. I generally leave this as zero, excuse me, because I don't, you know, I don't feel that there's a need to have that, uh, at least in these basic, basic maps. Uh, tactical Commander is kind of interesting if you do have combined arms. Tactical Commander means that you can control ground and air, I, I always say control, that's not that's not technically true. You can give move orders to your own team uh, if they are AI uh, controlled. Um, with combined arms, you can take control over ground units, and I will show you how to do that. Uh, JTAC is like Joint Task Something Commander. I'm not totally sure what that means, but in the game, or I should say in this game, I'm pretty sure it means that you can designate targets and call in airstrikes, blah, blah, blah. Um, observer is just exactly that. This is generally what I leave it at. Um, I don't, you know, I only have like a few friends that play this, and there's no reason to have like a million of these different slots. Uh, and I don't think there's a reason to have more than one tactical commander because that would be kind of weird. All right, so game basics set up. So now what we're going to do. Um, let, let us put, well, here, let's set the weather. Um, dynamic weather, I haven't really messed with. Um, you can do all sorts of crazy nonsense. I just, I generally, for testing purposes, kind of leave all this stuff normal, because if you're trying to test and see, like, what your AI is doing, you know, when it's foggy or there's, like, a tornado or something, that's, that's not going to be easy. So you can see that you can set all sorts of stuff in here. Turbulence is kind of interesting. It's kind of annoying, but it is kind of cool that they put it in here. Um, so, second step. Um, I'm not totally sure if this is needed, but I put it in sort of just for, well, I hate to say realism, but uh, to make it a little more realistic. And that is supply trucks. So, you click on the tank 
uh, the tank is just ground vehicles. Um, it will automatically give you a name, like, well, it just says new vehicle group. So in this case, we're going to switch it to Russia because it's um, uh, the red team. We're going to send it to unarmed, which means that there is no direct AI control. And I believe, oh, what is this called here? Okay, well, I know for sure one of them is a fuel truck, so we'll do that. So, kind of the, one of the weird things is that I know that this area is where airplanes are kept, or, you know, it's like a, they call it a ramp. Um, I know that that's where they are. I guess you wouldn't know until you play the map and just see. Uh, these things over here, these black dots, these are actually, uh, like, bunkers almost. So, if a B-52 does come and, you know, carpet bomb this whole area, uh, they are less likely to be damaged. Um, and when you start adding planes, it'll, it'll make more sense. So, so basically, the internet says that if you place a fuel truck somewhere on the runway, or this ramp way, I should say, not on the runway, good God, somewhere on the ramp, that uh, it will give you the ability to refuel and rearm. I actually had, I've had a hell of a time trying to figure out if that's actually true or not, but um, uh, that's fine. Transport fire engine, why not? We'll put a couple stuff stuffages in here. Oops. Okay, so perfect example. I just double clicked. It put a waypoint down. Uh, if if you start clicking on stuff randomly, all these sorts of weird things are going to happen. Just hit delete and then right click somewhere that deselects whatever you've got selected. So I've got a fuel truck and a fire truck. Let's see what else we got here. Transport. I can't, I'm really interested in this because you can actually set like the ammo and the fuel quantities to like not unlimited and so if you take off from this base you'll run your mission shoot some stuff burn a lot of fuel up if you come back and refuel your airplane uh, it will take that out of like the you know however many gallons are stored at the airport and then you may actually have to wait for these AI resupply trucks to you know shuffle fuel between airports to me that is actually really cool and it also means that the enemy team can blow up your resupply vehicles and then you're screwed the whole thing really is kinda cool to me that you can do this um, I kind of enjoyed making maps in Arma but that system I think was really kinda weird compared to this so, um, uh, I really don't know what we're going to do here. I don't know what any of this stuff means. Um, what the internet said, and the internet is never wrong, uh, is that you needed a fuel truck and a resupply truck to resupply fuel and ammo at one time. Um, I don't know. I'm going to put one of these down. It's like a transport truck. I have no idea. I haven't really done a lot of research. Um... And the, the testing that I have done has basically been uh, uh, inconclusive or not helpful at all. Okay, so we have ground uh, stuff here. The next thing we want to do is add some sort of basic uh, air defense. Um, I like the... Um, okay, well, so what I said before, these SAM things, you want to kind of shy away from these. Um, you can actually Google uh, these missiles and give, and it will kind of give you an idea of um, a man pad. It will kind of give you an idea of what the range is, but we're so close to the other airport that the range is going to be way, way too close. Um, I thought this Shilka was like a Vulcan cannon, but it was shooting missiles at me before. So um, I'm going to do the AAA ZU-23 on the Ural, uh, which is like a truck. And we're just going to put one of them down. So, I believe the inner ring is the visual range of the vehicle, and the outer ring is the radar range. I'm not totally sure what is this here. 
about a mile. Yeah, I mean, that's probably pretty accurate. Two miles for radar. I mean, obviously radar would be probably longer than that, but um, so this gives us, and I'm just going to put one down. This just gives us basic, basic anti-error. Uh, if you know one of your friends with a you know P51 comes in to harass you, it will own it right in the face. Um, so um, ground vehicles for support, uh, anti-air for support. Uh, let's add an airplane. So once again, it, um, it will make you choose a country. I'm going to choose Russia. Um, there are a bunch of other things in here, but generally speaking, if you just select Russia or U.S., that's going to be the majority of the planes. Um, obviously, with the, with Germany, you get the BF-109 and the um, uh, FW-190 as well. Uh, the items in yellow are the ones that you can fly as uh, that you have access to. Uh, so I only have access to uh, the SU-25T, the T-51D, and then the C-101EB that crashes the game. So I'm just going to choose this. Uh, right now, the skill level is set to high, which means that this is an AI-controlled plane. Uh, I want to set that to client. Uh, because I want it to show up uh, in the list when I join the game. So you click it down. Um, now, as of right now, this plane is at 6,500 feet going 270 knots in whatever direction. Um, I don't even know what the direction is. But we want, or I prefer it to start off actually in the airport. So you have a choice. You can say take off from runway, and it will put the plane literally on the runway. Now, it puts it in the middle, which is not true. Um, it will put you on the runway in front of it, ready to take off with the engines running. However, uh, unless you set the loadout in here, uh, it will be empty. So I prefer to do take off from ramp, which will do that. And then I, I hate how it does this. What's parking lot? No. So this is inside one of the um, bunkers. I hate it when it does this. It puts it in these stupid bunkers. I want to start out here. So this is the other cool thing here. Um, oh, it actually converted it to AI pilots. That's not what I want. All right. So you can set the quantity like of planes in the flight or group. Um, so you can have essentially like four of one type of plane, have one certain mission. That's beyond the scope of this. Uh, so it's kind of crappy, but here we are. Here's my airplane in one of the bunkers. Um, it says take off from ramp. Load. This, these are all the, the loadouts that are available. You can make custom loadouts. Um, I will go over some of these missiles in more detail, or I shouldn't say missiles, weapons in more detail, um, but uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to show you how to take off and stuff like that. Um, I have not tried the gun pods. I will have to try that. I couldn't actually get them to shoot when I was trying them. So, as of right now, you have essentially a functioning game. Um at least for one team. So let's save this as um, YouTube. And let's play it. So the green button here um, lets you fly the mission. Um, I have to change my recording software and then I'll be right back. Alright, welcome back internet. As you can see, uh, this is the uh, like start screen that you get, and I mean it's very simple. Uh, you have the one plane that I added, uh, and then a tactical commander for each side. So let's select this pilot, and hit fly, and magic happens. So um, right now the plane, uh, if you hit F2, it will go into exterior view. So the engines are off. Um, and, uh, actually there's nothing going on. So, I'm just going to give you a, a basic rundown. I, I'm not going to make this into a tutorial about how to start everything. So, right shift L 
turns on the power to the plane. Uh, now these are the default controls. Obviously if you've changed them, there's not much I can do to help you about that. Uh, so the second thing, so we got power to the plane. Don't turn on your engines yet. So the second thing we want to do is um, backslash, or the, the slash under the backspace key, uh, ground crew, and then rearm and refuel. And this gives you this thing. This load of this list of loadouts, load of loadouts, um, are the predefined ones, and you can create custom ones. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do is create my own here. So air-to-air -air missiles. These things are pretty good. Uh, you can do bombs. I haven't messed with bombs. These, the KH-25 series and 29 series. Um, are all um, anti-ground. Now there is differences between these. I don't know what they are. I just have experience. Oops, sorry, I hit the mic there. I just have experience with these. Um, now I don't have anything to shoot at, obviously. Um, but... So, so it says request rearming. Copy. Now, if it doesn't say copy, if it says something like cannot comply, that means that either your engines are on or the map is screwed or something like that. So if you go into exterior view, you can see that the missiles magically show up. Oh, is this not recording my game audio? It probably isn't. So you can see here that there it does actually take weight into account of your weapons. Now, this is a really, really heavy loadout. Okay, it is, it is recording game audio. This is a really heavy loadout. Uh, and in fact, it takes basically the entire runway to take off. So, all right. So, uh, right shift home will turn on both engines at one time. If you really want to get serious, you can do like, you know, left shift home or... Um, I think it's left control home. I actually printed out the, the instructions, or the controls. Uh, engine left start, right alt home. Left, or engine right start, right control home. Audio might be a little loud. Oh, whoops, no, I didn't really want to do that. Okay, so the engines are started. Uh, right, uh, left control C will close the canopy. And, uh, for... So that's the air traffic controllers. It's in Russian, of course, which is really helpful for those of us that don't speak Russian. Um, so a little bit of throttle to get this baby out of the garage. And, um... I'll probably make a little fast forwardy video of this of me taxiing because you probably don't want to see me taxiing. All right, welcome back from the time lapse video. Uh, we're about at the end of the uh, taxiway here. You can see, um, oh, interesting. There's like two of each or something there of our vehicles that we put down. So <clears throat> the reason why I was trying to put those planes on this part of the runway is because the taxiing is uh, kind of a mess, um, and by mess I mean it takes forever. It's like a half a mile or something ridiculous. Uh, this is a pretty big, pretty big runway. Uh, you can see the labels for uh, friendly units are fairly easy to read. Um, hold on a second here. Something in my eye. It's YouTube gold right here. Me digging in my eye. Um, uh, so it clearly says, you know, AAA, ZU-23, and your roll, whatever, blah, 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 and then it gives you a distance, so pretty easy. Um, if you're wondering why the fuel... Oh, I didn't ask permission to take off. Oops. Oh, but then they just cleared me, so whatever. So I'm sure all of the ultra-realism nerds are having a 
shit fit right now because I haven't been following the proper procedures and all this other crap. I don't care. That's what I think. I don't care. Alright, so, uh, I do F for single stage of flaps. Uh, I've tried it taking off with no flaps and with flaps, with full flaps. Full flaps, you basically get to the end of the runway and then you take off. So, um, I'm going to scooch forward a little bit here to get kind of lined up properly. So W is wheel brakes on this. Um, I don't have many joystick controls set up. I probably should. Um, I'll just go over some of the basic commands. Alright, so hold W for wheel brake, full throttle. You can see in the, um, well, right here are the RPM gauges for each engine. So let the engine spool up a little bit and let go of W. I don't know if this video is going to be helpful at all, but it's helpful for me. Whoops. So I'm using the rudder to keep myself uh, straight. Well, sort of straight anyway. I've got cords and stuff wrapped all over. Oh my lord. This is a, the worst takeoff ever. So in the upper left-hand corner of the HUD, you can see the speed. I don't actually know what speed this thing takes off at, so a little bit slight back. And we have takeoff. Alright, so gear up with G. And they're up. Hit F for no flaps. And we are flying. Now, interesting piece of info here. You can trim the plane out right now. Um, uh, what I like to do is you get a get a heading here, so about right that, and then you hit Alt One, and then you can let go. No hands on the joystick. So what what this is going to do is it's going to hold you at whatever attitude and altitude, or I should say whatever attitude and yaw you have. And then down here, you get the little um, light for, like, autopilot. So you can see that I was clearly uh, yawed a little bit to the right, because that's the direction I'm going. That is the most basic autopilot. Uh, so Alt-9 cancels it, and you can see that light went off. So let's trim this out. So I'm still at full throttle, so let's pull back a little bit. Um, I don't have fuel tanks on here, but... This thing has a lot of fuel in it, so so you can see that I'm having a tendency to nose down. So if I do right control period, you can see that moves the stick back a little bit. So this is the trim. Comma is left, period is down, slash is right, and then semicolon is up. So this plane is actually not quite level, I should say loaded levelly. Uh, if you choose one of the pre-made loadouts, it will be. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm not going to run into the mountain. So you can see that, you know, my climb indicator, it's probably going to be a little bit too trimmed up a little bit. But since we want to climb here anyway, it's really not a big deal. Um, so 460 kilometers an hour. This thing is pretty slow, actually. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna beef it here a little bit so we can get over these mountains. So um, yeah, that's it. I mean, this plane is actually fairly easy to fly. Uh, I'm using the world's cheapest joystick in the world. Uh, this is the Extreme 3D Pro from Logitech. Uh, I know lots of people use, um, you know, really fancy SciTech things. Um, I, I don't have one. I kind of wish I do, but on the other hand, like, meh. So, the point is, is that you can f you can play this game with some pretty cheap hardware. Uh, a $20 joystick and a keyboard, uh, to me, works 
just as easily as a $200 ridiculous joystick and a uh, throttle combination. Um, because I didn't have to do any binding. The only thing I had to change was the throttle on this. You know, I'm, I don't want to spend two weeks getting all the controls and buttons bound on everything. Um, you know, you have a 102 key keyboard in front of you, you might as well use it. And my setup here, the keyboard is just basically in, or the joy, yeah, the joystick is in front of the keyboard. So, however, um, a lot of people don't like that setup. They like the immersion of it, even though you'd be flying a Russian jet with like a generic, uh, you know, thing or uh, generic uh, hot ass, hot ass, if you will. Is that YouTube allowed? I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is flying. I'm pretty low, of course, but uh, this is it. Uh, I think I was saying something about the field of view. I just wanted to zoom out a little bit so you could see the uh, you know the controls and stuff. Um, all right. So the next thing we're going to do is cover basic, basic, shooty, shooty stuff. Um, so the first thing you need to do is you hit s the number seven, not numpad seven, the number seven, and it changes your reticle and it says ground now. Um, if you're not familiar with the reticle or the HUD here, the number on the upper left is your airspeed. Uh, is it airspeed? I'm assuming so. Uh, the number in the right hand corner, I believe, is the altitude in meters, but I could be wrong about that. Um, I think I think that's right. So we'll just we'll get level level flight here, if I can. Let's just set up here. All right. So autopilot is on. Let go of the stick. Perfect. So it's maybe up a little bit, but meh, whatever. Uh, the one thing I'm curious about is, can you trim when autopilot is on? looks like you can, but it looks like it compensates for it. So, alright, so, uh, basic ground shooty. So, if you hit C, it changes to gun. Um, now this is the built-in gun. I'll go to the exterior view, it might be a little loud. So you can see there's a gun on the bottom there. If you couldn't hear me, <laughs> uh, there's a gun, a cannon on the bottom. So, that's just simple trigger to shoot. I think spacebar spacebar also shoots. Um, if you hit C again, it will go back. Uh, in the lower right, it tells you what weapon you currently have selected. Now this obviously doesn't help you if you don't know what the missiles are. But down here, it will show you on the plane what they are. So 25 ML, 29 L, which are those big red ones, I believe. Oh no, the 29 Ls are the ones right next to me here. The 25Ls are the big boy ones. Now these all have differences. Oh, I'm getting pretty low here. Let me, um, let me trim it a little bit here. Let's just continue to fly. So this is the enemy airstrip here um, that we're flying over right now. And we will... Um, I don't have any things down or anything, so nothing's going to shoot at me, but, um, I don't know the flying time over here, but it was like, you know, like a few minutes, and that's, it's handy to do that, um, to have things close, um, because otherwise you're spending your whole life flying to an area, and then when you get smoked by a SAM or something, then you, you cry, like I do, um, So let's pitch up a little bit. Now I don't have waypoints set up. That will be a different video. Um, I will go over that. And I should say navigation waypoints. All right. So this is a little bit better. Uh, we're actually gaining altitude now. So uh, okay. So we have some missiles selected. Let's select the uh, kind of medium-sized ones, the 25 ML. Um, so these missiles are air to ground. Now, there are various range capabilities. Uh, the 
uh, MLs, I believe, are the, well, the medium range ones, which is like, I think, like 10 kilometers. So the next thing we need to do is get the targeting TV up, and it, it actually is called a TV, so you hit O, and that will give you a TV, and then on your HUD you will get a thing that says TV. So the same keys for the trimming are also for uh, aiming this TV, which are comma, period, slash, and semicolon. And you can see that I can move this thing around and it will adjust it on my little TV. So let's pick a building here to blow up. So plus and minus, zoom in and zoom out. This is as far as you can zoom. And as you can see, as I'm flying, uh, the view changes, which is kind of annoying. So let's hit enter. That will lock it, and when I say it, the targeting computer, if you will, uh, and then you can make finer adjustments from here. So, and it will also give you a range, so 35 kilometers. If you hit A, the autopilot will take over, and it will line up to that target. As you can see on the HUD here, uh, there is a, right by the TV icon right now, you can see there is a little, um, like, tr uh, pointer thing. When that gets below the two marks, that means you can shoot. Hello? Shooty? Why are you not shooting? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I lied. Now you can. Nope, I lied again. Oh, ha! Nice job. Wow, nice tutorial here, Chief. Alright, so, let's hit Enter to unlock. You can see the autopilot goes away. Um, let's try this again, shall we? Oops. I forgot a very critical piece of information there. Uh, these are laser-guided bombs. Missiles, I should say. And if you don't have a laser tar designator on, they're not going to work. So, let's find another target here. Zoom in a little bit. Perfect. Now, <sighs> wow. Well, this is why I make videos like this, is because... I run into problems like this and it helps other people. So we have a target locked, um, hit A, autopilot that shiz, right shift O, and you get a little LR, that is the laser, well it's laser designated, laser designator. So is that a building? It looks like it. Let's choose a different kind of missile. So if you hit D. Um, it changes the, the missile, and you can see that the little brackets are changing um, on this HUD here. So that is the range. Uh, there is, because the lasers are pointed down at the ground at an angle, there is a, a far range and a close range for that, you know, laser, obviously. Once the little arrow gets inside the two brackets, that means you can hit the go button. All right, so you can see that the uh, scale has changed, and we actually got like a little attack uh, thing. So I believe, yep. So a missile just shot out, you can see in the bottom there. Now there is some way to actually follow the missile. I'm not exactly sure how to do that. Oh, and then you can see that the, I wasn't actually targeting the building. So you can actually move the laser while you're flying. Here goes the missile. Kaboom. So, I mean, honestly, that is not not that difficult to do um, if you're not stupid. The other thing to notice is that if you leave a laser on too long, it will overheat. So I generally turn it off. And then you hit Enter to... Um, disengage the uh, targeting thing, and then there is a center, I don't know how you center, target designator to center, right control plus L, I, right control plus I, sorry, 
so yeah, that is a the most basic of ground attack uh, tutorials that I could possibly provide. The cannon, I'm not totally sure. Um, I mean, it's ground. I mean, it's. I think it's supposed to be for use against ground targets, but <clears throat> kind of sucks. Um, so I generally don't use it. That was the stall warning, if you didn't uh, notice that there. Um, did my gun overheat? I think it did. Or am I out of ammo? <laughs> I'm probably out of ammo, actually. Uh, so yeah, good times. Um, I guess there's really nothing else to go over in this video, um, for now anyway. Uh, so that is uh, a basic rundown of the most simplest map you could make, and just a, a basic, basic tutorial about the SU-25L. Uh, 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 so this is Doofus K, thanks again for watching, and we will see you on the internet in the next episode.